Hi everyone, it's Mikey and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So yes, I have some pictures of Elsa Lanchester, the Bride of Frankenstein. Now, I've had these images in my stash for absolutely ages and ages and ages. Um, I got them around about the same time that I did this art journal page. And the date on that is the 15th of August 2019. <coughs> Excuse me. So I thought I would do a kind of companion page to that one using these two. So what I'm going to do to start off with, I'm going to glue them down exactly as they are, straight onto the page. Now I've obviously gone round and torn the edges just to kind of feather it a little bit and blend them in. <coughs> I should have got a drink, I think. <coughs> That's better. Um, so I've already torn them out and feathered them around the edges. So I'm going to do what I haven't done for absolutely ages. I'm going to try and paint and blend these into the background, which is why it's still white. So I'm just going to glue these in using some matte medium. And I'm just going to add a little bit onto the page there. And I'll just use that a largest kind of brush to spread it around a little bit. And then once these are glued down into the position that I want them to be in, I can then start thinking about how I'm going to blend them into the page. So just make sure I've got all the edges. And then from the inside out, I'm going to start just working that matte medium in. I've printed these off, not on my inkjet printer this time. I actually printed them off um, on my colour laser, mainly because I've run out of ink and I just haven't had a chance to go and purchase some more yet. But it works just as well. Don't mind the odd little bit of a wrinkle or bubble. <coughs> oh dear, I think I'm going to have to go get a drink of water. All right, let me just get that one glued down and then I'll go get a drink and then I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. No, it's not red wine. It's raspberry, strawberry, cherry, and apple. Summer fruits. Right, okay, so. Let's just get some of that matte medium down there. Do the same again to this one. Make sure we get plenty down. And then I'm going to stick her down fairly close to the middle. There will be, a, like I said, a little bit of wrinklage as this beds in. But we try and minimise that. That side's dry. Got a little bit of a wrinkle on the forehead, but that's fine. It just looks like a bit of stitching which isn't out of place based on the characters. Okay, so let's get that dried off. And I'll be back. Okay, so get that matte medium out of the way. So now that we've got um, the two images kind of glued down onto the page, I can start to blend them in. Now what I like to do with the blending process, I'm going to move my mat further that way so I've got more room to blend paint. And I start off with the basic colour. So in fact, let's just give it a shake up. Now, sometimes I use black gesso for this, sometimes I'll just use acrylic paint. Um, <clears throat> and I'll just take the colour as it is and then just go straight onto the page but go into the actual image itself. And go as close up as you dare to the actual main image where it's dark. So you're kind of introducing that very same kind of colour right up close to the characters and then blend out. At the same time, if you wanted to add a little bit of variation into the colour, add in some lighter areas. Now, I'm going to go straight in with the same brush, take a little bit of the grey and then start integrating 
that grey in there as well. That way you can just start picking up bits of the colour and it can start mottling. You start breaking down the colour while it's still wet. And you can grab a sponge if you want to, just to kind of start to diffuse the colour out. You see how that started to diffuse up there. Bring in some more. And then just using that sponge, just kind of soften that edge a little bit. So you haven't got really hard lines. See how nicely it's working. And then just put that black again and I can bring that down here. And then grab some of that lighter colour. And start bringing it in from the picture. So follow the lines. And start working outwards. Light colours. And again, you can start to diffuse. And then, if you want to bring in some more lighter colour, bring in some white, I've got a different brush for the white, and then I can start integrating that white, just load the brush up. And then while it's still wet, you can just start bringing in the colour. Just subtly blending. A little bit more darker on there. And then if you want to, you can start bringing in the darker colour down there. I'm not going to finish this off with a, with a, um, a full edge. And then we'll just start getting a little bit darker over this side. Swap brushes. So to follow that kind of like shoulder. Grab the white again. Just start to kind of integrate it and blend out those edges down there towards the bottom. A little bit of splattering going on there. Oh, we'll just get rid of that. Yeah. We'll be adding some stenciling to this as well later on, so. That's fine. So bring that white further down, just a little bit of mixing. And then add a little bit of that grey down there. And 
and then just grip that white just so I can diffuse this area down here a little bit. There we go. And just get a real bit of the, the light kind of grey, mix it with a bit of the white. And then we'll just bring that colour across there just to integrate that shadow a little bit. Just kind of let it blend on its own. There we go, and across there again. And then we can bring in a little bit of that dark colour just to kind of diffuse over there. And then of course it's darker over here. So wherever it's darker on the edge, that's where I'm picking up the, the, the darker colour and then bringing it out, grabbing some grey, just to kind of mix it a little. There's a little flash of white across there. There we go. You can see it better. Now if I just dab that this kind of diffuses up a little bit. I'm just slowly kind of integrate that colour in. And then blend away. Almost as though it looks as though it was there originally. And I know the irony that I've actually taken away the black of the paper that was there originally. just to redo it again with paint, but you know, the whole process is about doing it differently. So I'm getting lighter at this side now, so I'm gonna start integrating some of that white with the gray. And then just softly on the edge. And blend it in. And then we can start having some fun with the darkness of the background. So it actually looks like they were actually done together. So again, darker up here. And then we start getting lighter. Until we get almost completely white. Just take some more of that white paint. Bit more. And then just grab that blending sponge again. Look at how easy it is just to blend that in. 
I know I'm getting a few little sludges but because we've protected it with matte medium they should just brush off And then we can just start to darken up again just as we get around this side. Because the paint's still wet, you can have quite a lot of fun with it. Just blend and diffuse it out. Okay, so I think now we've gone around her. It does look a little bit like she's lost some definition around her hair. So let's just grab some of that white. Just to add a little bit of grey in. But then again, she did have a white streak in her hair, didn't she? But it's more at this side than it is at that side, so... A little bit of that grey again. It's fun to take a picture and try and integrate it into an existing background or create a background. Okay, I'm kind of getting a little bit in danger of just losing some of that definition around her face there. So I'm going to just grab that white. Just put it back in. And leave it like that. And then I'm going to carry on integrating the dark bits in the background. So start off with darkers and then go in and pick up some of the light colour and then we can start blending out. Which is cool. So we've now got two kind of characters that blend and mould into one. Yeah, I haven't done this technique for such a long time. It's actually a lot of fun seeing how you can blend the two together. Ones that have got high contrast backgrounds, like the black in this, you know, work particularly well because it's easier to, to be able to kind of blend them together without worrying too much about what's supposed to be where. So while that's still, let's grab some white in there now. Let's see if we can try and lighten it up. So we've kind of got a foggy background, a little bit dark, a little bit of light, we can diffuse 
Just take some of that white across there. And then bring that black one back in. Just have a little bit of fun with it. And again, grab that sponge and then just go in, dab and diffuse. <laughs> like it. So this area over here is going to be a little bit too dark, I think. So let's integrate some more grey into that over here, just for some difference. And I'm just going left and right, up and down with the paintbrush. I'm just going to bring that colour a little bit over to this side just to kind of integrate it while it's still wet. Just so we can have a kind of diffused background. Okay, so grab the sponge again and then just quickly go around diffusing any of those harsh lines we've got with the brushes. Like so. Okay. So then again, I'll get some more black. Actually, no, I'm going to go with the grey. Go with the grey. So I grab that grey, just mix in what I had with the brush, and then from that outer edge, just start bringing that back in. And I'm going to kind of leave this top corner. Pretty much as is. Just put that brush down. I'm going to clean it off a little bit. So I want it a little bit whiter than that. I can always come back in, but I like doing it while it's still a bit wet. Okay, now I can get that grey. That's it. And then grab that sponge. And I'm just rubbing, just ever so gently, while it's still wet. Just to kind of diffuse out, and just take a little bit of white. There we go. So we don't want a totally black background, because it would just look wrong. You want a kind of smoky background. Okay, drop those brushes into some water. Bring that in so to show you the full page. Love that. And then let's get that dried off. Okay, so that background is now pretty dry. So I'm just gonna bring this other one in that I did last year, over a year ago now. So I used a stencil, um, which was originally supposed to be coral. 
so that's this one here, to create like flashes of lightning. So it can be used as a crackle, so it can be like the, the crackle in an old log. It can be used as coral at the bottom of the ocean, or it can be used as lightning look. So that's exactly what I used last time. And I'm going to use the same one again. Um, but before I do that, I want to add in a little bit of colour down towards the bottom here. So to do that, I'm going to use this, um, my Carnival, the Carnival One, yeah, Carnival One stencil. Uh, and I'm just going to put it down here. And the colour that I want to introduce is a little bit of green. So on the old page, let's see if I can find it. I keep closing the page on it. There you go. It was quite green, obviously, and there were touches of purple and and orange because it was a Halloween, well, August. It wasn't even a Halloween page. Um, and then they were kind of like white and blue. So I'm going to try and keep those colours kind of similar. I want to add a little bit of green into the background of this one, which is why I'm going to use this sour apple, which is a, a kind of cool sort of Halloween -y green. But I'm just going to load it up on the sponge. I'm going to grab just a little bit of that white and a little bit of that grey because I don't want it to be totally, totally like in your face green. And I'm going to just rub it so that it's white, well, it's lightish. And I'm just going to just gently kind of like rub upwards so that I get a soft kind of effect in the background. So rather than dab, I'm wiping just ever so subtly. And I'm going over the centre, in the middle of the two pages, I'll pick up a bit more of the paint. And as we get towards the top, I'm easing off. There. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just lay it down again. This time, a little bit more of the green. Leaving the gunge that's already on that, I'm just going to mix that in just to, so we get a different kind of colour variation. Just line up those points subtly and then just lightly go over again. This time working my way outwards. like so, and then on this side do the same thing again. Let me go up. A bit stronger towards the top, because it's a little bit lighter towards the top of the page. This is kind of how you integrate your image into the page because you start bringing your pattern down a little bit and then just where she is over there I'm going to just use the existing paint that I've got and just do some over a shoulder. Actually coming in and going onto the shoulder itself. And then just to finish off, I'll just do a tiny, tiny bit over here, right at that very edge. Just there. Liking that. Okay, so I'll put that to one side. Again, I'll just quickly get that dried off. Okay, so that kind of Harlequin in, in the background is dry. And I'm starting to really, really like this art journal page. The next thing I want to do is integrate, integrate a little bit of graphic kind of text. So I've got my XYZ stencil. So I want to add a little bit of this into the background as well, just to kind of make it look a bit more scientific, if you know what I mean. 
but I want to do it in a subtle way. So I'm going to use some of this di diozazine purple, he says. I'm hoping it's pronounced that correctly. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that purple right bang smack in the middle of all that other colour. And I've got another piece of acrylic sponge and then I'm just going to pick up a bit of that purple with the white and then also just kind of mix it a little bit with that grey that's on the worktop just to kind of give it a diffused almost heather grey kind of look so I don't want to go too heavy and then just to make sure I've not got too much paint on there I'm going to just wipe over and create some texture And I'm just very gently just rubbing the paint through the stencil. I'm not pressing really hard and I'm kind of missing those kind of um, diamond patterns a little bit because we've already got harlequin patterns in the background. I'm just going to lift that off and then add a little bit more of that down over here and there should still be plenty enough on the stencil without having to reload. Yep, and then I want to do a little bit more towards the top here. So I think we'll do these arrows try and get those exclamation points in there or as we call them here in the UK exclamation marks I think we'll just have some of those squares in that background as well just because Okay, so again, let's get that dried off. Okay, so while I was um, drying that, I was looking at the kind of like the heatheriness of the purple and also the green kind of saginess of the diamonds in the background and thought, do you know, if I introduced orange in there now, it would be really jarring. So I'm not. I'm going to just take a step back from it and just go, do you know what? It doesn't need any orange. Those two colours on their own with the black and the white are just fine as they are. But what I do want to do is I do want to add in just that kind of lightning strike that we had in the previous one with um, Frankenstein's monster. So I just want to grab another bit of sponge. I've not got many of these left. So I'm probably going to have to get some more next time I go to the store. I mean, packs of four, and I always cut them down into eight, so they do last me quite some time. So I'm balling up, and I'm just going to pick up some of the white, and I'm just going to put it down onto the mat, and I'm just going to work the white into the sponge, and then grab that. Now I'm going to do it as though it's coming from her, because she's the one that's screaming. And I'm just going to very subtly just go over and dab through. And as long as I don't use, um, sorry, as long as I don't move the stencil, I can just keep going back and adding more in. So I can go back and add more. You can never take it away, not without removing or going over the work that you've already done. And hopefully 
hopefully this will be you know, pretty good kind of like highlight on the page. I don't want to get too much paint on the, uh, the sponge at this stage. Still want you to be able to see kind of the impression behind it. So, because you're not putting a lot of paint down, it does dry pretty quickly, which means that when it dries, you can go back and just add a little another layer over the top and just build your layers up and build your layers up until you're happy with them. So I'm going to hold on to the stencil. See what I mean? I'm happy with that. And I'm going to just twist it around a little bit, hold it down, and do the same thing at this side, emanating from the other, the other bride. So they're both kind of alarmed. A bit more paint. Like I said, you can add, but you can't take away. I think that's going to end up being my epitaph. <laughs> I've said it so often. Okay, I think I'm going to be happy with that. So let's just do the reveal. Yes! Like it. Like it a lot. So even though it's supposed to be coral, like I said, it does work really well for lightning. Dual use, unfortunately. Um, I don't know whether this is still being produced. It's from a UK company called Ross Paper Crafts. The company is still going, but this one must be at least eight or nine years old. So I don't know whether they're still producing it. It's probably discontinued by now. But there you go. So I need to get that dry. So I'll get that dry and then I'll be right back. Those lightning flashes are now completely dry. So I think all I'm going to do now to this art journal page is just add on my little quote or phrase. So <laughs> I think this goes without saying that I think most of us feel exactly the same way about what's going on in the world at this moment in time. So I'm literally just going to put these three letters on the page. Now these are just self-adhesive foam stickers that I've just placed on a little piece of acetate just so I've got good purchase on them for when I stick them down so that I can line them up properly and make sure that they're in the right place before I just lift that off. And then I can just stick them down. <laughs> and I think that just says it all. And I'm not going to add anything else to this page, not even any splatters. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly sign it and put today's date and call that page done. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create this art journal page. If you have, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with your friends and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I'll be back again very, very soon. Bye for now.